folks at the back, uh, love to have you come up to the front. to make it easier for uh, the interaction because this is a fairly interactive session. So if you would like to move up a little bit front, then you'll be part of the whole dialogue that will happen as part of this uh, education process today. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the beautiful Sunday afternoon. Uh, my name is Vajish Kalari. Uh, this is uh, another successful, we are happy to do another session of <coughs> college admissions program. So with that, actually, I would like to introduce uh, Rishi Kumar, who is the Saratoga City Council member, city organizer of various social events. He's, uh, has been to play he connects uh, youth technology program, wellness program, and social events. Uh, so he always tends to help to give back more to the to the community. So with that, I introduce. Sorry, invite Rishi Kumar on stage. Thank you so much. Thank you, and uh, welcome everyone. So we have been running this uh, college seminar for a couple of years now. You know. And the format used to be like panel discussion. We would get uh, college uh, counselors from lots of different uh, areas of expertise. And we would have a panel discussion, run through Q&A and things like that. And eventually we have come up with a model that hopefully you will find it as very efficient and uh, also very educational as well. And uh, what we have today is uh, Vinny Gupta. Vinny Gupta is right there. And Vinny and team are basically going to run through about 90 minutes uh, of a college education process. And we also have an expert in the group. So Vinny does a fine job of uh, making fairly interactive. And he engages in a lot of Q&A to basically address the questions you have. And that way, it's, uh, it's not just like unidirectional, but it's basically fairly uh, oriented in terms of addressing the questions and concerns that you have. I just met somebody who is looking to transfer from De Anza to one of the UCs. So that would be also potentially addressed here. So if you have any very specific concerns or questions or ideas or just you're seeking information, this is the appropriate venue to basically air them out. But uh, what Bidi does is, you know, he basically uh, fine tunes the, the counseling based upon your, the specific needs of your child. It's not basically a single black box. And uh, many of my friends have actually gone through this uh, program. You know, I have a buddy who is in Fremont. We actually, uh, and that's how I actually connected with Vinny, because many of my friends were uh, leveraging the services that Vinny offers, and uh, they were finding it pretty useful. And so we thought that this would be a good seminar for us to bring. We'll run this twice a year, and I think for whatever reason, the, we did this back in March, and it was a lot more packed compared to today. 
and uh, this is like college. How many of you are actually applying to college right now or beginning the process? Okay, so we have a few who are applying to college. And how, how many of you are here in, from live in Saratoga? How many of you? Okay, so we, we have a good section of the crowd from Saratoga. But, uh, you know, so basically that, that's the plan for today. And uh, we'll run this fairly interactive. We'll get a lot of, lots of Q&A done. And we also have an expert. And uh, so by the time we are like 5.15 or so, we should be getting wrapped up. And you also have an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one counseling. So with that, uh, let's give a big round of applause to Vinny Gupta, the founder of UPEZ. Thanks very much, Rishi. So uh, for those of you who don't know Rishi, I wish more people would go into public service with a heart like this guy does. Thank you so much, Rishi, for what you do. Sorry. I'm so sorry, Vinny, but uh, you know, many of these events that Vinny was talking about and uh, you know, we run a robotics club. Uh, you know, there was a time where we had a single robotics team from Saratoga, and we do a team formation day. And we this year we had about 22 Lego robotics teams that were formed right here in Saratoga. And then we did run a Lego robotics boot camp. So lots of different efforts, not only STEM, but we also run yoga, meditation, Bollywood fitness. And if you are interested, you can find that information at tinyurl.com tinyurl.com slash Saratoga class. And we run these because of our sponsors, because many of these are all free. And people always ask me, where do you find the funding to run all these programs for free? Because to rent something like this, it costs money. You know, there are many, many different expenses. So we have sponsors like UC Easy that make it happen. So a big round of applause to UC Easy. And we also have uh, Karishma and Deepak Chandani. Uh, please, uh, Karishma, would you like to join us? And uh, you know, Karishma and Deepak have been uh, supporters as our event sponsors uh, for a few years now. And many of these uh, programs that we are able to run is because of uh, their support. So I would like to introduce uh, Karishma and also hand over the mic to her. Thank you. Uh, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Rishi, for giving us the opportunity to uh, sponsor this event. My husband and I have been sponsoring for the last two, three years. Our own kids, I have twins who went to college and we didn't have something like this to help us to, to you know, kind of figure out our way around that. They're now in college, final year. Um, but I wanted to thank you for giving us the opportunity and to do this community service. Community has done a lot for us and we're happy to do that. Thank you, Karishma. And I'll tell you what, you know, I think many of us uh, go through the college admission process and we feel sort of we know it. But you know, the process is changing quite a bit. You know, the SAT exams have changed quite a bit. So the format changes every single year. And why not leverage the experts to learn what exactly the latest stories of that? With that, let's give it to Vinny. Thanks again, Rishi. Welcome, everyone. So the reason you guys are here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon, obviously, is that this college admission thing is stressful. Yes? All right, okay. Uh, just a quick show of hands uh, for parents in this room. How many of you were not born in the US? Were not born in the US? Okay. How many of you did not go to four-year high school in the US? Okay. How many of you did not go to four-year college in the US? Okay, all right. So you guys fall in the traditional definition of what is called a first generation immigrant. Though in affluent communities like Saratoga and Cupertino, Palo Alto, we somehow don't think of ourselves as immigrants, but we are, right? That's just the definition. I'll get to that later as to why I brought it up. But before that, since you guys took the trouble of coming here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon, I just want to make this a little bit worth your while so that you will pay attention for the remaining 90 minutes or so. Take a look at the graph on your screen. Can everyone in the back hear me fine, Sunil? How are we doing? All right. So what does that graph say to you? That over the last 10 years, the number of applicants to the top colleges in US has doubled. Now, context setting. This presentation today or the discussion today is about selective colleges. 
Okay, they are defined as colleges that have an option of choosing who gets in. There are a lot of colleges where you will apply and you will get in. We're not talking about those. So we're talking about colleges that have a choice. So the hyper-competitive colleges, UCs, Stanford, Harvard, those are the kind of colleges that we're gonna talk about today. We are not saying that other colleges are not good, it's just that today's context, today's goal, is to talk about selective colleges. So for those colleges, the graph that you see is from a magazine called US News and World Rankings. They are the authoritative source of college rankings in the US. In the last 10 years, the number has doubled, and some of you might say, what's the big deal? The big deal is that the US population every year has grown by two or three percent. If you compound it for the statistically minded parents in this room, it doesn't add up to 2x, right? Something is changing, and we can talk about what's changing. Let's go further back. Let's go further back to what is called acceptance rates. Acceptance rates is when a college gives out a letter. Of the hundred letters that are given, how many are, or how? Of the applications that come in, 100, how many of those are given acceptances to? That number for Stanford, can somebody guess as to what that number today is? The gentleman says 4? 4, 6. It's closer to 5.5. Okay, young lady here, 5%, uh, what does that mean? One out of how many students? One out of, awesome, cool, A in math. Okay, so that's one out of 20 there. Now, University of Chicago, where my son goes, and he will be here later to join a panel, is 6%. Now, again, you might say, what's the big deal? The big deal is that in 1990, University of Chicago acceptance rate was 63%. So for those, sir, at the back, did you go to college in the US? Yeah, yes. you did. So if you think, that the stuff that you knew back in 70s or 80s or whenever you went to college, the college admissions world has changed since then. And maybe that's the reason why you're here today. Right? So immigrants like me, who were not born in this country, who did not go to high school here, who did not go to college, I am at a disadvantage, right? But the gentleman at the back, who was born possibly in the US, went to high school or college, as old as I am, Around that time, the world has changed for them as well. So keep that in mind. Let's look at the follow-on slide. Okay, coming up. Okay. So, just mathematically, or, or perhaps not, since the applications have doubled, but the capacity, the number of seats in Stanford have not increased at all. And the same is true for most UCs, same is true for Harvard and all that, all these selective colleges. So what has happened? It's the same number of seats, applicants have doubled, so the, your chances of getting in, my friend, have come down by half. Right? That is the challenge which you are facing, which my son faced, which your parents possibly did not face. Okay? So that is the reason why you need to pay attention today. Is that if you don't, A, if you don't realize the reality of this, and I'm not here to scare anyone, I'm just sharing with you very hard reality. You can choose to ignore it, but all I'm saying here, and the rest of the session today would be about, if you are an ambitious child or an ambitious family, and if you want to compete at the level that these colleges require, then be real. If you think that you're not gonna change and it's gonna happen on its own, I don't think it will. You might get lucky, miracles do happen, right? But without that, it's not gonna happen. So for these colleges, you're playing in the big league. So you, sir, at the back here, I'm not here to scare you, I'm actually here to challenge you in a good way, to say that you should dream big. Dream big, but put the effort behind those dreams in the right strategy. And you can do it. People do it, right? But don't just keep walking into it. Because keep walking is not going to work. That's all I'm saying here. I'm not here to scare anyone. But I'm, I'm actually I'm hoping that the students here would walk away from this feeling empowered that they have a clear 
line or a clear guidance to move forward. Is everyone with me so far? Okay. Now, I talked about immigrants. And the immigrants are, we talked about this, right? Immigrants are at a special disadvantage because this process, starting from high school, we have no idea what high school is about. So this process is hard for everyone, but for immigrants, first and second generation immigrants, it is even harder. So I'm gonna try and play a video for you. Hopefully the sound will work, it's not gonna skip. Just one second, bear with me. Okay, let's try this. which you can actually see on our website, on ucezy.com, for the first and second generation parents in this room or families, is that just be aware that as first generation or second generation immigrants, your children are at a unique disadvantage because we cannot help these children. We are smart. Most of these people in this room are coming from affluent jobs, I would guess, from Saratoga, Cupertino, elsewhere. Money is not an issue. You guys are all smart. It's just that you don't have the information. So number two, we didn't go to college here. There is a double disadvantage that our children are dealing with. Okay? So just keep that in mind. So let me very quickly introduce UCEC, and then I'm going to discuss the agenda for today. Okay. So as Rishi said, I'm a co-founder of UCEC. And uh, let me quickly introduce our team, uh, VK Kolari, our co-founder, and then Ruchi Saran, our director for community partnerships. Hey, Ruchi. So we founded UCEC. It stands for University and College Admissions Made Easy. We founded UCEC to make college admissions easy for everyone, for everyone, but especially for first and second generation immigrant families. Why? Because I and VK felt the pain of ourselves through the college admission journey of ours, of both my kids and his kids. It wasn't fun. We'll talk a little bit more today about what we do, but the thing that we can help you with is that we have a team of high quality college admission experts. And one of them is gonna speak with you for 45 minutes starting just about now, where these counselors or these experts can work with your child on a private basis, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, to walk the child through every step of the way for college admission, starting in grade eight. But they can come on board anytime they feel like, 10th, 11th, but earlier the better. So essentially, all the college admission worries that you have, you can give to us and we will take care of that. That's what we do and we'll talk about that. I do want to talk about something which we are very proud of, that we have, we are a business, but we have a social mission as well. And the social mission is that we want to help immigrant communities. And in Bay Area, there are so many of them, I can see half of you guys are immigrant families. We want to give back also. And what that means is that while we charge for our guidance programs, every year we provide completely free college admission guidance to 50 students from low-income, first-generation immigrant families. And if any of you feel the same way in supporting us, talk to us after the event because this kind of giving back, we always need help. We've received extensive media coverage uh, in national papers and our own San Jose Mercury News, USA Today, uh, Washington Times, so people are talking about us. We are a national company with students and experts all over the country. And lastly, we have strong partnerships that you can learn about on our site with community organizations, 
especially centered on first generation immigrants to educate people on college admissions. So with that, let me quickly talk about the agenda today. So first thing, you're going to listen to Sharon Kravenis, who I will have the pleasure of introducing in one second. And she's going to talk to you about literally the topic for today, everything that you want to know about selective college admissions. And I promise you, she will give you a very different way of thinking. Sharon is going to talk about 30 minutes or so, and then we will have a Q&A. So please keep your questions ready. Hold those questions, though, for the presentation to finish. After that, we're very fortunate to have three, we'll have a panel discussion, where we will have two parents. One of the parents is of a child who finished high school and is at college. So he is going to talk about the journey, the whole college admissions piece, but also some parenting elements of the college admissions process. We would have another mom, and these are all UC the customers, by the way. Uh, we have another mom where the child is a sophomore, is a 10th grader, and she'll talk about how she dealt with her anxiety in terms of college admissions. Lastly, we have a very, very special person on the panel who happens to be my son. So, obviously very proud of him. Uh, he is an incoming third year at University of Chicago. And for, the, for those of you who don't know University of Chicago, it's a very highly ranked private college, currently ranked at part of Stanford and Yale. He's going to talk to you guys about what did he do differently to get into a top college like that. If you want to ask the questions to these panelists, feel free. And then, after we are done, if we still have time left, I will talk about a topic which is completely passionate to my heart, which is what real role can you parents play when we talk about admission to top tier colleges? I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to give you a different way of thinking. I might make you squirm and uh, be uncomfortable, but you know what? Life is short. I just feel that if I believe in something, I'm going to talk about it. And if even two out of hundred Listen to what I'm saying, I would have made a difference, right? Then lastly, what we would do is that with Sharon Kravenis, our next speaker, we would have just one slot on a raffle for somebody to meet with her one-on-one -on -one for 15 minutes. And that's how our day will end. So we started late, sorry about that, because we had another event. Do you think we can go to 5.30? Or does anybody have a hard stop? Okay, everyone cool to 5.30? Okay, awesome. We've got enough refreshments out of the bag. Water and sugar, healthy sugar, Richie, right? <laughs> okay, so let's, let's now go into... I want to quickly introduce Sharon. Sharon, do you want to come up, please? Okay, so I have the distinct pleasure of introducing one of the most experienced counselors in the Bay Area, guys. I'm not kidding you. So, Sharon Travis. Because I'm old. <laughs> I, I didn't say it. I got read it. <laughs> so, Sharon Travis started in college admissions back in 1980. That's before I was born. Do you believe that? <laughs> so, uh, she's been in college admission for almost 40 years now. She's been an assistant principal in a public high school. She knows that system. She's run college admissions programs at top tier private high schools. She's done that. She's been admission director in a college. She's taught college admission counseling at UC Berkeley. So college admissions counseling, for those of you who don't know what that is, these are people that provide college admissions guidance, and it's a graduate certificate program that's offered by UC. She taught there. She was a member of the Bill Gates Scholarship Fund, et cetera, and consultant for College Board Princeton Review. So without, and, and she is a UC Easy counselor, and we all hope you love her. So please welcome Sharon for the next 45 minutes or so. If 
<laughs> Good afternoon, and I really, really need you to understand that I don't want to talk about the stress of the admissions process. How many of you are in the ninth grade, or you have a ninth grade child? Tenth? Eleven. And then seniors? Are there middle school parents here? High school students only. How many of you would give anything to be able to get up and walk out of this room right now and not deal with this? Raise your hands, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, I get it. The process has become nuts. It's a fact. However, my goal today is to let you understand, when we talk about knowledge is power, I really mean it. And the power is simply, okay, I know what's coming next. Needless to say, the earlier you know this information, the better. Those of you who have been through this process already with an older child, please raise your hand. You did, you're, you're still walking, you're still talking, you're still living through the process. So, folks, it happens. You, you do live through it. But I have seen this process actually have a horrible effect on families, and it shouldn't. And the reason is because, in all truth, there are 4,000 four-year colleges in the United States. We just get strung out on about 25 of them. And so I'm going to, really? People cannot hear me? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to change the, the definition of selective a little bit from what Vinny said. And for the most part, most college admissions people who do this work consider selective admissions to be defined as work that is done at colleges that admit from like 50 to 1%, okay? And so if there is a college where admissions people are selecting who gets in, it is selective. Now we are going to talk about highly selective. There are all kinds of terminologies. So throw out some names for highly selective. It's almost like Jingle Bells. We know this. Harvard, Stanford, Yale, Princeton, MIT. What else? Pardon me? University of Chicago. Yeah. So we know about these schools, and certainly, as I'm talking to you, I am certainly going to be talking about here's what they're looking for. But it's important for people who are sitting in this room who are saying, you know, I'm not sure that a Harvard is the best for my child. I already know my child. I don't know that that's the best place. You have to know the information I'm going to give you 